The venues that were back in our days, there was no venues. Mm. There was a couple of clubs that used to have break dances on because my, my history is from the b-boy side of things. Um, I remember they used to have a lot of um, di uh, like discos or yeah, discotheques or clubs back then would do uh, theme nights, but they wouldn't have a dedicated hip hop night per se. And the first jams were places like YMCA, 84 in the city, basketball court, b-boys straight up and DJs, that's all it was, and graph writers. And the next big one that I remember was, um, was Contact. Subterrain as well. Subterrain. Subterrain up top. In the city, uh, across the way from the university. RMIT, yeah, yeah, yeah. Across the way from RMIT. Through the 90s, there was bamboo, yeah. uh, a lot of one-off jams, and then, like I said, uh, I had Planet of the Breaks in, uh, you know, in 97 was the first hip-hop club and they ended up going for like six years. One of the first gigs, one of uh, the first venues to really get behind hip-hop was Revolver. Uh, I had my launch there in 98, I think Mystic Journeyman had played just before that. That was sort of the first time I was going out to clubs and organising gigs where I really knew what was going on. Um, so Camillo from Revolver had that happening. Uh, Richard Moffat from the Corner Hotel was getting behind us with the Boney Stoney stuff and also showing lots of support. Uh, but back then there was there wasn't that many gigs to there wasn't that many venues that wanted to support it. And then everyone gave it a bit of love, and all of a sudden all the venues wanted to get behind it. And then as things change, you know, the the violence comes into it. Too many people are out. Then venues don't want to touch it again, and that whole cycle goes through but at the moment you know you still you got the Prince of Wales, there's gigs at the Espy all the time, Corner Hotel still support it, Revolver here are getting back into it, um, yeah Hi-Fi Bar we had Cursor there the other day you know some underground dude and he's you know selling out Hi-Fi Bar, things have changed a lot. When it comes to venues in Melbourne there is a fuckload of venues in Melbourne there is so many venues in Melbourne it's not even funny hip-hop venues is another thing so You've got the Laundry, you've got Tetris, we do hip-hop stuff. Um, Miss Libs was a pretty pumping hip-hop joint for a while, but they've just closed down, so we've lost another one. Um, the live music drama that's going on with venues is making it a lot harder, because um, they won't have bands after 11 or 1 in a lot of venues now. So that does, you know, make things a bit harder for us to get you know, live bands and stuff in there, but I think it's up to the artists as well, you know, like a venue's a venue, if you can put together a night and you can promote your night and you can make that venue believe that you are going to pull enough punters to your night, you can get a spot anywhere. Um, it just, yeah, it really comes down to you having the hustle and getting into the venue and telling them that you want to do something. Yeah, that's, a, that's always a tricky one. I mean, hip hop's growing in this country, uh, very, you know, at a rapid rate. You know, you, you have to do is look at the hilltop hoods and stuff like that. And I think with venues, I mean, a lot get closed down because, you know, something about that hip hop genre of music sort of brings out a few few rough hooligans, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes stuff goes down and the venues, they get worried when they hear, oh, it's a hip hop night, it's a hip hop night. No, no, we're not going to do that. But, I mean, there's still a lot of venues out there that will put on those, you know, consistent hip hop shows, and you got the bigger ones when they bring out the big international names. So, could we use more venues? Yeah, probably just to switch it up a little bit more. But I mean, I don't think we're in any dire need to, you know, start taking it to the streets. And you know, I think I think we're okay here at the moment. Yeah. Well, running my own hip hop night, I was just lucky enough to stumble upon a good venue. Um, I think that, yeah, there's there's more venues for rock music, like the pubs or dance music, but yeah, I think venues are starting to realise that hip hop's the, the biggest growing genre of, of music and culture in this country, so uh, I think that that won't last long. There'll be 
plenty more hip hop nights coming up. <laughs> I don't think there's a lack of venues. Um, maybe if that's an idea, maybe people aren't looking hard enough. Like you look in a beat magazine and look at the venues list. There's just thousands of venues. Obviously, there's a small percentage of those who catered to hip hop. Like some of them, they just like won't even listen to hip hop, you know. But we don't have to worry about those places, I guess, because it's not really going to uh, attract the kind of crowds or the people that you you want in your, in your gig. Not that we're saying we don't want everyone at our gig, you know. I want a wide variety of, of fans and listeners and audience to come to shows, obviously. So, uh, but no, I don't. I don't think so. There's probably there's always could be more. You know? Venues are fairly seasonal. And uh, it's been interesting over the years to see uh, uh, what's the flavour of the month at any one time. Sometimes uh, venues just jump on and put, put a lot of money into not only uh, you know, putting on the gigs but also, also the promotion for these gigs. And then historically we've had uh, you know, issues sometimes at some of these venues and fights and tagging of toilets and stuff like that. It's kind of turned some of these venues off, really. Um, it is. Yeah, I can... Um like it's become, it's, it's a lot more, it used to be part of the culture thing that you'd rock up to a gig, you tag the toilets, um, but I think uh, the scene's a lot more aware of what that actually can do for hip hop as a culture and for people who are trying to do shows that, um, that it does put people off. So um, it's definitely, it's changing. There are still some people who don't quite realize, but um, my overall view of it, um, I've just noticed that people are very aware now that that's not really as on as it used to be. You've got to really be, um, I suppose, as an artist and as a member of the hip-hop community here in Melbourne, uh, grateful for venues like uh, the Big Bamboo, Prince of Wales, Prince Band Room, Revolver, Laundry, uh, the SB. They've kind of held true and supported us since day you one. Can see you right now. I'm the prince, somebody show me where's my crown at All black fitted, new ever round back My life, my beats, I bring some under Well, uh, yeah, I come from Cairns, which is a, you know, a, a tourist town Oh, well, we come from Cairns <laughs> And um, it's, it, uh, Melbourne has definitely a lot more opportunities And a lot more venues than where, where I come from, you know It was, I had to, you know, bust my balls just to get, like, where I am now, you know And moving here was the best thing, I mean, um it's everywhere, you know. You, you find the you find a bar, and, you know. They do open mic, and you can just uh, you know speak your mind, and that's that's what hip hop is, you know. Truly expressing uh, your poetry you've written. And, yeah. Somebody tell me what does it take to be the real and the real? This place seems fake, man. I can't get a break, and it's brother about to break. Create your destiny, but you can't fight fake.